Mark Hand, thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to take a second to ask you to coach me on some playing to help me play the melodies in a more beautiful way. Um, it's been a long time since I've received your coaching, but you're one of the most uh, inspiring mentors that I have a memory of working with. It's been a long time. So if it's okay with you, I'm just gonna play some short melodies, let you have a chance to coach me so that other people can see what they might take for this for themselves. And I wanna let everybody know about your program, which is called Make Beautiful Music. It's for any instrumentalists or conductors. And it's starting, uh, I think it happens from time to time, but there's one coming up soon. So people can go to thebco.org and then look under conducting programs to find Make Beautiful Music with Mark Hand Thakar. So is it okay with you if I just start with the melody and you just just give me the real deal, man. Don't, don't take it easy on me. Okay, no, it's not okay, because first I want to say that I first met Dr. Howes. <laughs> I first met Chris uh, when we were both much younger. <laughs> um, and he was, uh, I think, in high school then, and just really impressed me uh, memorably with with your ability to hear and listen and absorb sound. And it was it was Ex and, and, and to an extreme degree. It was so. Um, it's really a pleasure to see what you've done and, and the contribution that you've been making. Uh, and I'm honored to be here with you. Thank you so much. I want to start with a. I, I'm having you know my my classical chops aren't necessarily what they used to be. Although I like to think I'm always just two days away. You know, if I just practice, I could, you know. But I'm going to take like a kind of a simple like baroque ish melody to start with that I'm pretty sure you and other people will recognize and just ask you to coach me on it. So sure. I can't remember, you'll know the you'll know the excerpt, but it's something like this. <laughs> So give me the give me the goods, man. What do I need to do here? What's going on? Okay. So the the principal issue is that we want to be able to absorb, to have the highest experience. And, and let me just take a, a second and talk about that. It's possible just by absorbing sound to lose ourselves in the sound, to, to become the sounds, to, to transcend this physical reality during, during, our, during that time in which we absorb the sound. And that can happen under certain circumstances. So in order for that to happen, the sounds have to come to us as whole for me to have this indivisible experience of the whole continuum. And of course, intonation, all the tones have to have to be in tune or, or participate in the same uh, intonation system. They have to participate in the same metric system, but there's a controlling element of wholeness and that's an energy. And so if you hear, so um, a tone itself provides some energy. It, the energy is in our consciousness of the tone. So this is really the, the absolute nuts and bolts at an atomic level. For us to absorb any sound, it creates a certain energy in our experience of that sound. Now, wholeness of the object in terms of the energy comes when the energy we create, we play out in equal measure. So Bach gives us, he starts with this tone and then he increases the energy. Now, Bach has four tools to increase the energy. Um, volume, which he leaves very much to the performer. Um, pitch, in other words, as we go higher, tends to create more energy. Uh, he also has a, uh, the tool of rhythmic density. In other words, if I increase the density, um, I've increased the energy. And then there's also Harmony, which even though this is one line, there's harmony. So um, we want wholeness. We want to create energy. 
And, and this energy happens on multiple levels. So it's a hierarchy uh, because uh, that's what made Bach Bach. That's what made Mozart Mozart, that they could hear or the creation of energy and the playing out on multiple levels all the way up to the level of the whole movement. So let's start with the first with the first little grouping. Creation of energy and resolve. Now, Bach has four tools. We have two tools. Volume and rhythmic density. In other words, we can push the tempo forward or we can let it settle. And volume, the louder we play, the more energy we create. So in this case, now the next grouping. So now we put these together. There's that first little uh, meta grouping, if you will, because now we have the first one. Now we have energy left over, but it's the energy left over that allows us the, to the second uh, part of the phrase. So now we have, okay. Less, less volume. Now where does this start? The first one, second one, less. That's a pop, then. So there's that first grouping. So let's let's try, um, let's try that from the top. Maybe just the first. Uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six notes. Yeah, super. And I I, I would suggest that you can even let it grow a little more. Now, uh, okay, so let's just take this. Because the other thing is, right now what I'm doing is I'm putting weight on the F sharp. But what I haven't talked about is, once we, once we determine the grouping, wh what is that dynamic structure? What is that structure of energy that allows the whole grouping to come together as a whole. And so it all comes down to, uh, it comes down to the music and the energy ending at the same time. So we have to, we have to, we put the climax. We could, could we play this? Sure, sure, absolutely, we could. But um, that's not gonna, come whole because here's the energy now we have energy left over and it seems we would say oh that's not very musical but so why do we so I've structured it this way because we have to put the height of the energy where it can be played out and so at the end of that grouping the energy and the music end at the same time so for example, now, if we go to the next level, I could say... But that's not what Bach gives us, because he gives us this octave leap, which is a punch in the mouth. Now he repeats it. So we have these two phrases. Uh, so let's go back to the, the first grouping, and then... Super. Now, what well, what you did there? I know you were. Uh, this is not to this is not to say what you did was bad on purpose, but you actually took a little time at the end trying to be musical. But uh, in this case, Bach goes on, so you didn't have to do that because Bach goes on. So now we have this phrase. Now let's take the next one. So let's do the same thing. We take the. And now let's put it together with it. Uh, 
Good. But again, this time the leap is a six. But it's a, again, it's a punch in the mouth. Not as big a one as the first one. Yeah, and I would say you can, you can kick it. <laughs> you know, we think of, okay, well, Bach didn't write any dynamics. And so, no, it's <laughs> in order to make the most of this music, go for it. But yeah, I said a punch in the mouth but on purpose. You know, it's not, a, it's not a delicate, maybe it's a delicate little kiss. But in any case, it's something unexpected. It's something new. It's, an, it's a pop. And here's the answer. Now, uh, so we now have, I don't know how many bars that is, but we now have those two larger groupings coming into one. Could we do it? And when they came into one, because the first one, and then this, it came here. Here's the climax. So the first climax, second climax. Less. Second climax, and we talk, go back to energy. Second climax is playing out the energy. Again, could we play it a different way? Could we play it? Absolutely. Sure. When you say playing out the energy, it's interesting because I, what I remember from 30 years ago working with you, the idea that I walked away was, was we want to create energy and then we want to release the same amount. You're saying playing out. That, that's the same but, thing, but, correct? In, in other words, yes. Yeah, play it out, release it. Release it. The term I use uh, is release it consequently. In other words, the release is consequent to the amount of energy. Um, yeah. So, so now let's try the let's try this whole opening phrase. Yeah, but Chris, pop it. Bam ba da di dum. Yes. Now we have a hole. And when we have the hole, we can come into it. How do you mean? Well, we can look. You you listen to music. You hear it. Sound washes over you. You absorb it. And if it comes to you as this hole, you can receive it. You can you you can receive it. You can sink into it. You can join it. You can lose yourself in it. In, in 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 a very real way, because ordinary consciousness is about um, it includes the self. In other words, right now I'm the subject of my consciousness of this activity. So I'm seeing my computer. I'm seeing Chris on the screen, and in this in this consciousness, there's me. I'm the subject. You are the. I'm seeing you, and that's the case of every. Uh, of of every act of consciousness, except for this aesthetic one, where um, by the fact of me being able to uh, absorb the sound, and I then lose myself in the sound. It's a very common expression, um, and in fact, I think this is what Zen Buddhism is about. Moment. I think that's what. A basketball player feels when he feels like I'm in the zone, I can't miss, that it's not, he is the ball or she. Uh, and in this case, we are the sound. And so I, I tell conducting students, or in fact, if my, my conducting book, the last chapter is Be the Music. And that's what any musician strives for. That's what you strive for anytime you pick up that instrument is to lose yourself, lose Chris in that moment so you can transcend. That's a magical thing that music can do. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. And so this, uh, and, and the book, because uh, you, you talked about this in the context of looking at a painting, and there, there was one of your books, uh, to, what are the books that people can find where you, where you really explain this, you expound upon this idea? Well, I, I just, <laughs> this, is, this is a little embarrassing because there's a thing, a book, actually with, with people going on Zoom now, you can you can buy you can pay someone to set up your library behind you so that but I just happened for reference to have these two books here so <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So uh, this one is, let's see if they Looking, Looking for the for hard the, court cut. Right. Where and, this is where you're really expounding upon this whole philosophy of of the indivisible experience uh, between the performer, the composer, and the audience, correct? Well, yeah, exactly. You mentioned painting. And and in fact, the the other art form that can do this is well there, there are there are two kinds of art forms. One is an art form that brings us into the world more vividly. Um an opera, it's or a theater. It's about the it's about the experience, and and we, to a certain extent, we lose ourselves in the experience. But more likely, we um, we benefit because the experience that we're feeling on that stage or in that drama amplifies our own experience um, of of a similar situation, or it. It, it amplifies, it explains. It, in, in that way, we're better when we leave the theater. But music and painting can do this different kind of, ex of aesthetic experience, which brings us into ourselves. So for painting, we go to the museum. If it's a great painting, it was actually the first thing I do when I'm at a museum is I walk toward the painting and I walk away and I want to find the point at which I can absorb the whole painting and nothing but the painting. And then allow myself to absorb that, those visual images, that, that uh, combination of, of visual percepts. Uh, and if in a great painting, there are forces at work in those images, working against each other. And a great painting is one in which the forces combine all to one which allows to, me to come in. Now, you might enjoy a, a painting of Elvis on black velvet, uh, and it certainly has some value, but it won't do that for you. But what? why is Monet Monet? Why is Rembrandt Rembrandt? Because their paintings allow that. Okay, and so the painter, the painter is, so we have three parts in, in music. We have the, at least the, the the classical nerds among us uh, have three parts, right? We have the composer, the performer, and the listener. Well, the painter was the composer and the performer. So the painter gives us the aesthetic object. But we as the performer, we're the ones giving the aesthetic object with very much the help of the composer, of course, uh, um, given the landscape of the of the composer. But if you think of it, if you think of it like, all right, you're a chef, and uh, you can take the same ingredients and have me cooking and have a, a great chef cooking, and that chef's meal is going to be way better than mine. And so it's the same, same idea of the composer gives us the ingredients. Now, what do we do? How can we make the best experience? Well, it's the experience that allows us that that profound transcendent ability to get in touch with our soul i'm so excited to be able to to bring you back to some listeners and and hopefully spread the word for people to get to 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 work with you and experience this idea of how they can get a transformation of how they view the music and how they can get lost in it and help the audience get lost so for everybody a reminder to look up mark and thacker and his program, Make, Be Make Beautiful Music. It's for any instrumentalist, any conductor, and you can find it at thebco.org, as in Baltimore Chamber Orchestra, thebco.org. And if you look under conducting programs, you'll get a chance uh, to, to learn more about this program, Make Beautiful Music, with one of my most inspiring and dear mentors, Mark and Thacker. Thank you so much, Mark Ann. Oh, Chris, thank, thank you. It's been an absolute, it's a gas, it's been a gas. Loved it.